man? What do you know? Is, is our government against black people? Or is, has our government ever been against black people? Has our government ever had systems in place or, or policies that, that, that were specifically to keep black people down? Embark on a soul-searching journey with Small World and Dirt the Dream Saver. Two brothers from opposite corners of the United States connected by a shared quest for the truth and self-discovery. One originated from the vibrant streets of Oakland, California, the other from the soulful landscapes of Gastonia, North Carolina. Watch as their individual curiosities to unravel the true identity of the black man in America unfold into a profound exploration of black history and black culture. Join them on their quest for the knowledge of self as they uncover the hidden facts and history about the black man and the black woman of the United States of America on the latest episode of Who Am I? Like, subscribe, comment, and share. And join us as we collectively grow through this profound expedition together. What's happening? What's happening, beautiful people? Welcome back to the Who Am I segment. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am your man, Antoine Dr. Dream Sever Johnson. I'm your bro. I'm your man. Just somebody who's trying to figure it out. And I want to let my other man introduce himself. What's going on, y'all? Small world. Hey, so look. Man, I, I don't know if y'all checked out episode one. This is actually episode two of the segment. And um, Small World and I are really on a quest to figure out. I know I am. I, I just want to know who I am. Like, that that's what it's the great. mission is. That's what it's all about. That's what this, this segment is going to be about. Like, who am I? Like, of course I know I'm a black man. Of course I know I live in America. But as far as being a black man that lives in the United States of America, um... Only thing I know really about my being here is I probably was here before slavery. Um, I probably was bought here for slavery. But only thing I know after that is I was for sure enslaved at one point, my people. And now we supposed to be free. But okay, we was people. We was human beings. We was living prior to yeah. that. So, yes, I want to add on. Um... They didn't just take slaves, bro. They took mathematicians. They took scientists. They took no, teachers. That's what they were before they made them slaves. Yes, exactly. We doctors. We was mathematicians. Mm -hmm. We was exactly. we, we was everything the world needed prior mm -hmm. to slaves. So we were made into slaves. Like they didn't take slaves. They took human beings exactly. and made them slaves. Mm -hmm. Like so I I like to say they enslaved them. Like let's get the verbiage correct. Like they, they took all of these beautiful human beings all of these people and enslaved them. So prior to that, like, I want to know, hey, what, what what did my people do? What what type of tribe was I from? Like, what, what was my culture? What was my heritage? So that's what I've just been wanting to know lately because I'm just looking at the timeline, man, and it's been some things going on. So that sent me wanting to know. So that, that's what we're going to be talking about on this segment, like, who am I as a black man in America in the United States of America? Like, like who is where I'm from and, and what happened, what has happened to me to where I don't know? Like, exactly. like what has happened to me to where I I don't even know who I am. Like, and maybe some other people can relate to this. Like, you you know what this current world wants you to be, but nah, I want to tap back into what the creator wants me to be. Like, what <laughs> what was I actually put here for? Because at the end of the day, like quiet as kept, we really chasing our tails, trying to make really? a living, trying to create, much, trying to provide when everything that we working to provide was already provided for us. Like, let's keep it 100. But like everything that we spending a lot of time working for, the creator already gave us and the work was needed to just be to bring it into it. Like food supposed to grow everywhere. Yes. It ain't supposed to be a limitation on where food is growing, but somebody yeah. wanted to somebody wanted to control and manipulate that. All right, so yeah. then like, okay, this, this shelter I got, like, whose mm -hmm. idea was it that you own the land? Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's when, like we all own the land. Now, if I knew who my tribe was, if I knew who my people was, we would already have what was designated and left for us. Correct. Like, but since somebody wanted to, you know, take over and own everything, now we we renting and buying from who? 
when the creator yeah. left it for us. So that's what I mean by when I say everything we need to live and survive was left here for us. Like, but God didn't leave us a house. He didn't leave us a chair. He didn't leave us a table. He left us the tree for us to work <laughs> and bring the things into existence. But we work to bring just our livelihood into existence. So something went wrong somewhere. And I want to get, get to the nitty gritty and ask the question, who am I? And how did I get here? Like, who am I? Who was I? And who I'm supposed to be? That's that's the mission I'm on because I I I I just want to figure it out, man. I just want to figure it out for me and my bloodline. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Serve the creator. To serve the creator. So I got a big question and I want my brother to help me answer. First of all, I want to ask this. Like, just so y'all, if y'all may not have first to kept caught the first episode, brother Small World and I, this is literally our second time ever talking. We don't True. talk. We don't talk, in, but we hadn't talked prior to the last episode. Like we, I sent out a post. I'm a, I'm gonna edit it in. I I sent out a post looking for like minded people to have to make some content with and start a conversation. He responded, and now we're here. So last week we had a conversation, we had a talk, and this week we're gonna have a conversation and we're gonna have a talk. But I gotta ask the brother because I've been meaning to ask the brother, how did our Instagram pages cross paths? Um. Honestly, I want to say because of the content. I think, yes, the algorithm. Uh, when I first ran across your name, it was it had the uh, follow beside it, so I was like, "Oh, let me, let me, let me see what's up." And then I seen him. I remember it was like two years ago when you actually did your first one, and actually had that episode of chasing your dream mm -hmm. and all that. I've been I, I, that ever since that episode. I started following you, brother. So. Just full circle. Mm -hmm. So that just for me confirms that everything is working in our favor. We right on time with what we're doing. Um, our ancestors, which I'm trying to tap into, like, don't get me wrong, man. I believe in the creator. I believe in a God because I'm here. Like, that's that's why I have belief in that because I'm here. Duh. Mm -hmm. So but for me, I'm starting to question the way the God that was taught or the way that God is taught, the way spirituality is taught and all of these things. And my spirit and my creator that I feel is telling me that I'm absolutely right by questioning it. Because the truth will mm -hmm. always be the truth. So mm -hmm. the truth don't mind being questioned. A lie does. Say it again. The truth don't mind to be questioned, but a lie does. So with me searching for the truth and who I am, I understood right then that the God that I want to serve is the most highest, most powerful God that runs everything, that got everything on lock. So he ain't going to trip off me questioning how I learned about him. He's actually exactly. encouraging me to so I can build the relationship to trust him even more or exactly. her even more because I don't know. All I know is what some manly people have told me. I have I haven't learned to tap into my spirit and tap into my ancestors. I wasn't taught that. This is a journey that I'm going on on my own. Because I got me personally, I got tired of praying to a weak ass guy. <laughs> like I was looking at the condition of my life, the condition of my well being, and the condition mm -hmm. of my people. It didn't add up, and it didn't add up. Like hold on, we've been doing this for so long. Like mm -hmm. we've been we've been doing this for so do we not know who God really is? Because if we did, we would have the power to because uh, from the stories I hear. So I'm mm -hmm. with this, I'm gonna just be all the way transparent. You can come to the to my personal stuff to where I tell the story more, but I just want to let y'all know for those who are coming just for this about how I got to wanting to get this information. It's because I never had a connection with that I have now. I didn't have this connection. So I was going through a lot of turmoil in my life. I was going through a lot of things in my life to where it made me question, like, I can't know who God is because from all of the things that I hear about him or all the things mm -hmm. that I've heard, like, my life doesn't look like a representation of that. Mm -hmm. 
So since I was just looking internally at like who I was, what I was doing, what I was addicted to, what I didn't have no control over, what 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 was happening within my marriage, what was happening within my family, I was just looking for in me. So I'm like, I must don't have a relationship with God, right? So then when I seeked for, it was like, okay, do you are you even real? Because this is me. Like I I I I I, I begged and pleaded to the Creator that I don't have a relationship with you. Um, and at this point, I don't even know if you're really real because I don't have a relationship with you. So with that being said, I'm in a, between a rock and a hard place. I'm either about to go all the way this way or I'm about to go all the way that way. I'm not about to be in the middle no more. So I need you to present yourself in my life in a way that I know for sure that you are real, you exist, and you and 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 I need to, you know what I'm saying? So that's what my mm-hmm. prayer was. Because I was in, I was literally in between a rock and a hard place. I just lost my job. I just got fired. And I and I know what I know. And I'm damn near about to be 40 years old. And um, I got to start over from rock bottom. All I got is a high school diploma. So I'm about mm-hmm. to go get a job to where I'm about to get hired. And the person who's going to be telling me what to do is going to be half my age because I was that person. I was an mm-hmm. 18, 19 year old manager, supervisor type dude telling people twice my age what to do. And I used to always wonder how would that make, how do that make them feel? Like, so mm-hmm. I knew how it would make me feel knowing I'm fucking four or five times smarter than the motherfucker I'm about to be having to listen to. So that really <laughs> sent me on the path to where it was like, I'm not going to play with this shit. Either I'm about yeah. to go all the way this way or I'm about to go all the mm-hmm. way that way. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, I think for a lot of us, that's what it is, and we don't even realize it. Um, and I think children, you know, they're they're the best barometer of that. If you actually go to these public schools and the so-called problem children, they're not problem child. It's just that they're tired of being lied to. They see it and they're tired of being lied to, and they feel like what they're doing, there is no, you know, um positive ending in sight because they don't even see it and that's their reality and it's like sometimes as grown people we like to be delusional to that fact right we like to think because they're kids they can't see they can't hear they can't feel what's going on around them and that's where the disconnect comes in between the youth and the old people not to try to get off but it all ties in but you you you're absolutely right because at the end of the day that's what my whole other thing is about is getting to the youth at an earlier age because what what happened was I always seen through the BS as a young man, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I still didn't see no other way other than chasing the American dream. I saw oh, yeah. the, I saw through the BS, but then I mm-hmm. also saw then I gotta pay bills, I gotta mm-hmm. make money, I gotta do this. You know, so I, this is a young man seeing this. So it's like, okay, I didn't have the understanding of you can tap into self. We're we going to talk mm-hmm. about that later, though. But I didn't have the yeah. understanding that I have now. So, of yeah. course, I was chasing that American dream. So I was getting, now that we back full circle with what we were just saying, I feel like we're all chasing our tails because everything we need is provided for us. But if I keep them chasing their tails just to survive, I can keep mm-hmm. distracted from the truth. And that's and this what is we want to get to. Mm-hmm. Like so many of our people have to worry about just surviving that they don't even have time to care about the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we're too busy. Yeah. To, I don't, I'm, I'm too exhausted for this. So mm-hmm. I'm thankful that when I got sat down, when I got, because I was chasing the American dream. I was working 80 to 100 hours a week. And then I ended up getting fired. And when I got fired, it made me ask myself and really face the lies that I was telling myself because I was convincing myself that I loved it, that I was mm-hmm. making cool money, that this is what I want because we had the money, this, that. So I was convincing myself. And since I knew I was lying to myself, I had a heavy drinking problem because I was depressed and I was on drugs and I was on all type of stuff. I was scared to face me because I knew I was lying to me to to do something that I thought I needed to do for my family. Mm-hmm. That's all I knew. So when I was taking and, and and I was um using my job as my manhood. Like you couldn't tell me shit as a man 
because I'm making all of this money. I'm this, that, and this. Even though I was pissed poor morally, I had mm -hmm. always had great spirits. Always was a, but as far as for myself, I was giving everybody else more than I was giving myself. So oh, yeah. when I got fired, it was like I had to really ask myself, like, damn, are you you've been working since 15, supporting yourself since 17? Like, are you anywhere close to where you want to be financially? Like, no, you 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 just made over 100 G last year. Where the money at? So are you anywhere close to where you want to be financially? The answer was no. So it's like, are you anywhere or are you anywhere close to having a life of fulfillment? The answer was no. So it was like, are you even happy? The mm. answer was no. So it was like, what makes you think you go do this same shit for another 20 years? Anything gonna change? So you went wrong somewhere, bro. Something mm -hmm. happened somewhere along the way. So that's what sent me down this journey of like, damn, like, okay, I I, I, I got to figure it out. Like, because I got to figure it out. So either I'm going to go all the way this way or I'm going to go all the way that way. <laughs> it's so real. No more hairs to That's what got me there. So that, that led me to ask about myself, you know, and starting to ask questions about myself, I realized how much I didn't even know about myself. About mm -hmm. how much, like I like I said, I created my manhood or my manhood came because of the job. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell me shit as a man because of what I did at work. That was just me. So since I didn't have work no more, it made me question my manhood. Like, yeah. you don't got a job. Yeah. You don't, you, you're not provide. you're not bringing in no money, you're not providing. So mm -hmm. what, what are you bringing into the world? What are you, who are you? Like, what, what, what are you, what's your value? Like, what's your purpose? What's your, so it made me question all of that stuff because I had put my um, worthiness into the wrong thing. So once that was taken away from me, it was like, Damn, I spent all this time putting worthiness into that. Now that it's gone, what's wrong? What's my real work? I think I think that happens to a lot of us. It, it, it sounds similar to myself. Um, I was asked to do a program at this uh, job, and um, it was to be a black history program. I didn't know it was going to turn out the way it turned out. It turned out great, but man, if you could have seen some of them faces when they when they heard what it was about. I made, I, it literally made people get up out their seat and walk out. Yeah. And I said to myself right then, I said, man, I'm on to something and I hope I don't lose my job. But I was wrong about the last part because I definitely lost the job. <laughs> I mean, so that, that's going to be a perfect segue into what we're going to talk about today, what we're going to break down today. So let's jump into it. Who is the original man, brother? Like that's that's the, the 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 question I wanted to ask myself, and what I mean by original man is like, who was here first? Like, how did humanity start? Like, I don't, I want to get away from talking about religion for right now, and I just want to talk about fact because of course we know Adam and Eve and this that and this, mm -hmm. so, but that's what we was taught. But I want to know was we taught facts. Yeah, yes. So if if the story of about God that we were taught aligns with facts, because the truth gonna always be the truth. Yes, so sir. The truth yeah. don't mind being questioned. So now I think it's time for us as a people to question the truth, or at least question what we were taught. Because that's going to bring out the truth, and we should be able to stand on truth. Uh, 2024 is going to be the year of truth, so we're going to ask the right question. Oh, yeah. Got to. Got to. But uh, as far as your question go, I, I did a little digging. Who was the original man? Yeah. Let me know, brother. That's the question, <laughs> and uh, as I found out, you know, they started digging at one certain point of time, and then they had stopped. And I said, why did they stop digging? Because it was kept getting blacker the deeper they went. <laughs> and as you know, <laughs> it's the truth though. It's the truth they stopped because they kept getting black. And the last time they stopped, uh, I believe they stopped on a woman named Lucy. Okay. Okay. So as far as, as, 
as far as I got with the uh, as far as the remains and everything. But they, I don't think they want to go any deeper though, bro. All right, well I do, I do. So I want to I want to get to the nitty gritty. And I know when I asked myself that question when I was on this journey that I'm on now that started in 20, it really I got fired in 2019. And this journey, mm -hmm. this this journey of uh, trying to live, trying to figure out how to save my dreams. That's why I call myself mm -hmm. Antoine Dr. Dream Saver Johnson. Cause I realized I wasn't living the life of my dreams. And I knew it, I knew I needed to save my own dreams. But I also I also knew once I figured out how to save my dreams, because once you learn something, you can teach something. Exactly. Once you learn something, you can teach something. So I knew I was on a mission no matter what to figure out how to save my dreams, how to build the life of my dreams and live the life of my dreams. So I knew that was going to happen for me because when I, once I'm determined or something, once I put my mind to something, I don't stop until I'm fucking done. Like, that's Man. just who I am. Like, that's just who I am. Like, that's, it is what it is. So that's what I wanted for me. When I, I realized once I find it for me, damn, you can teach other people. So that's what a, the, the dreams, everything come up, came along. But, when I asked the question, when I started this journey, I started asking these questions, wanting to find out who I am, who the original man is. I got some answers from the nation, brother. Like, and the mm -hmm. nation forced me to think about a lot of things, man, because it always, for me, was, I was not really told not to mess with it, but it was always made look like a bad, like, type thing, right? So right. I don't know if y'all remember, but I think it was uh, 2020 that George Floyd got killed. Yes, somewhere around that. And was it, yeah, it was 2020, I believe, or early, mm -hmm. late night, I think it was early 2020 that that happened, or mid 2020 when that happened. That really um, caught my attention, or it might have been, I don't know exactly when it happened, but around the time it happened, I don't want to misquote the date, but around that time it happened is also around the same time I was going through this um, transformation or this, 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 you know, questioning of things. So it made me really look at, because uh, I saw how ra racial tensions were getting high um, because of that. And that wasn't the first, George Floyd wasn't the first time something like that had happened to a black man. And for me, it was just like, I know I'm a black man in this country. I see what's happening to other black men, other black boys, other black children, other black people, other black women, Sandra Bland's and all of these. I'm starting to see that, right? So for me, it just really made me think like, no, no, no BS. And I'm not trying to, I'm just speaking about the what ifs. Mm -hmm. Because there is... One side of the, like, if I say a racial war, it's going to be like I'm trying to start it or this, that, and this. But if it's a racial war, obviously they're going to try to put it to black versus white, right? Mm -hmm. And it used to, I used to be scared to talk about it because I didn't want to make it seem like I'm bringing or I'm trying to speak up hatred or I'm trying to ignite one. Mm -hmm. But the thing I realized is we got to talk about it because if it is going to be quote unquote black versus white, what side am I going to be on? <laughs> yeah. Duh, right? So when it made me think like that, it was like, okay, who am I aligned with though? Like if True. it was to kick off today, True. If the shit was to hit the fan today. Ooh, true. What alliance do I have that where I know that my people got me? Because at the end of the day, I've seen evidence of their KKK that get to hang people and burn people and mm -hmm. do whatever. I see how they click ride and get down. We got pictures and, and truth evidence of that. Right? But my people right. are peaceful people. So I had to ask myself, like, we don't really cause harm to nobody other than ourselves. Right. But if the war came against us, who do I stand with or who do I have to stand with? 
that's that's where I'm at with it. So I'm I want I'm trying to paint a picture of a timeline so y'all can get context of my journey. So it ain't mm-hmm. like I'm just you know like I'm just a, a real black man trying to figure things out, just seeing what he's seeing in his world, seeing what he's seeing in his, in his reality. Just like really like dang, it's 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 really not cool for me. Yeah, and uh, and to add on around that time period you were saying, not only was that happening. They was getting off. They was going back to their family. They was going back with their families with checks in their pocket. Meanwhile, we ain't even got to talk about this side. So, you know. Yeah. But, I, I, that I, was, wanna, you know, I, I just wanted to talk about that, that as, as we grow because I got feelings about that too. I'm going to put a pin in that. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me put it on tape so y'all know that we're going to come back to it because I'm, mm-hmm. I'm breaking this down in journey form mm-hmm. because where i am now is not where i started speak on it so i gotta speak get on. people who want to grow with dirt caught up on how dirt got to where dirt is now so i'm breaking down my journey of when i wanted to seek the connection to really just figure it out for me so mm-hmm. all right so my brother just spoke on how they get to get off, right? And I'm going to just speak on this and then I'm going to get back to where I was. All I know is at one point in time, for sure, for sure, in history, that's one thing the gang culture got right. Is you touch one of mine, mm. everybody it's coming. Don't be a problem. Everybody mm-hmm. can get it. Mm-hmm. So, who got my back like that? Where are my people at that got my back? That got my family back? That if somebody do something unrighteous to me, everybody can get it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's where I'm at now. So, but that's kind of <laughs> where I was like. That that fit, that damn that damn show fit hand in hand to where we just was in the story. So it really do, it really do. Because yeah. like where we at. So anyway, it made me think, man. Like, dang boy, this is gonna be a great one because because how it's just already building up. Like, who am I? Like, okay, like where are my people at? Like, if it was to really hit the fan today, who do I see? This black mm-hmm. training that's been ready, that's been out there, that's been doing things for black people, that's been about black people, that's been like really improving their people's lives, and with the nation. See, you know something, man. Um, I came to that conclusion myself. I right. started and once I came to that conclusion, I, I sat back. Um. I ran into a brother Ben X. I that's ran into him. Probably, that, that, that was the first one. Probably linked through brother Ben, bro. Yeah, yeah, probably did. So that was that was the first um, brother I met. And then it was Rizza, Rizza Islam. I started listening to them too. I'm like, man, they they on point. They they young and they on it. I said, they asking the same questions I'm asking. Mm-hmm. I said, they ain't scared. They get out here and ask the question. So they start looking at me like, I ain't scared no more. They can do it. I can do it. So I started asking the question. And and little did I know, that's when I ran into 19 Keys. That's when I start meeting these other brothers. And now I'm looking at, at it now. Like, at this point, I've been, you know, stopped going to church or whatever and all that because I already felt something was wrong. But now I'm like, yo, where am I? I don't see nobody on this side doing nothing. Mm-hmm. But all I see is them mm-hmm. speaking on what's really going on. Everybody else is covering up, acting like it ain't going on. They meeting it head on. Mm-hmm. Fuck over here. So with that being said, I'm looking, I'm being observant, right? So then that got me to question it because I'm in a, 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 a era of questioning. And like I said, the truth don't mind being questioned. Mm-hmm. So, 
I'm in a uh this 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 whatever I'm going through, I'm questioning everything because I had if I'm questioning my manhood, it's time for me to question oh, every fucking yeah. thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anytime you get like that, that's what I say. So, Reevaluate yourself. So I'm reevaluating how I got to this point. I'm reevaluating everything that came into my head. I'm reevaluating everything that came into my life. I'm questioning all the shit. So mm -hmm. as I'm doing this questioning, it made me think and look up at not where I was just individually as a person, where my people was as a people. Mm -hmm. So then I'm looking at it like, okay, if this was the jump off, and we and, and we had to really take you know like they they showing how they feel about us and how they and they they showing it mm -hmm. right to our face on TV like so it's it, it's being televised so anyway if it was to be like okay we we enough is enough we need to we need to stand up for ourselves and now it's really us versus everybody else. Because if y'all gonna keep letting this happen to us, it needs to be us versus everybody else. Facts. So when I started seeing that, it was like, but who is the us? So when mm -hmm. I started seeing who was actually doing the work and building the us, it made me think of like, like, dang, I see the the, the the nation out here. Like, hold on. When I was little, they was telling me like they was they was the clown on them. They used to make it look like yeah. this. When I was a young man, it was like, dang, it was the nation was where you didn't want to go. You didn't want to join the cult. You didn't yeah. want to do this. You, yeah. It was so many just like negativities about it, right? So I'm thinking this is a grown man now, but I'm like looking at what's happening now, and I'm looking like what's going on now. Then I'm looking like, damn, who ready? Then where do I go? Then who can I who can I run to? Like, mm -hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm looking at it, but then that made me think about my own church. Like, yeah. I'm just, just acting. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, hey, don't y'all don't want nobody to get offended and take nothing personal. So just just follow me, follow me, follow me, okay? But then I start looking at my own church that we've been going to for years. They've been preaching the message for years. That just telling us about the God and Jesus and revelations and all of this stuff, right? So I'm reading it and you know, I'm reading into it more, and it's starting to make more sense to me as I'm looking and asking questions. But then it made me ask this question. How you been preaching this message for so long in our Baptist churches and all of these other churches that are housing black folks, but what have you been doing to prepare? Mm, mm, mm. That's, That's a good all. question. Like, yeah, I'm, good I'm question. just looking at like me and my well-being for my family. Like that has been going to church for heck of long. That that has been you know, supporting mm -hmm. the church for heck of long. And, and, and oh, yeah, I think, especially if you grew up around our age, you was in the church. Yeah. You was in the church. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there, there was, if and buts, maybe it's about it. I don't care how, how late you stayed out Saturday night, you was yeah. getting woke up. So, it's just like for me, I'm just starting to look at what's going on, where we at, What's happening? And then it was like the Bible ain't changed since it was introduced to me. I know we got different versions of it now, or you know, like they got different versions and different whatever, but for the most part, it ain't never changed. Mm. So you mean to tell me you preaching the Bible, teaching the Bible? But you're not preparing your people for what the Bible is saying is coming down the pipeline. Mm. Because once I start, once I start seeing that mm. what the Bible was saying is actually playing itself out, it's like, okay, well, where was the preparation at? Mm -hmm. And once again, I'm looking like, okay, who's prepared? Hmm. Who's been telling you to? get up out of American jobs and get do, do for self for so long? Who's been telling you to grow your own food for so long? Who's been telling you to house your own water for so long? For my people, like, uh, so as I'm asking the questions and looking, once again, I see the nation. Mm -hmm. and I start to understand about 
why I was steered away and far away from. Yes, um, about to ask. Go ahead. Let me let me let me. Mm -hmm. get on, get on to what you to saying about the nation. What really intrigued me about the nation is when I actually start looking into uh, certain people. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. let's just say. Malcolm mm -hmm. X, so mm -hmm. many of them that we can name. And I just start seeing the tactics they use to just mess with them, just uh, how they tap their phone, how they mess with the kids. I'm, I'm just sitting back. That made me think, why would you do all this to one person if what they're saying ain't true? We're going to get there, brother. We, 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 hey, it's all building up to the conversation that we're going to continue to have. And, mm -hmm. and more of us need to have it because they can't censor us all. Because mm -hmm. the day that we all are on the same page with the same understanding of what's been taking place, now you can make a decision of what side of the fence mm -hmm. you want to be on. And exactly. don't be mad at the consequences you get from the choice that you make. Exactly. All right, let's keep going. So, who was the original man? Right. We we asked that question. We got there. This that and this. So this is I'm on this journey, and I'm I'm like, dang, okay, I'm getting all of these. I see this. That. So I started listening to what the nation had to say. Just a little, like I, I, I'm I ain't messing with. Just so y'all know, disclaimer, I'm still in my questioning phase. So I'm not claiming no religion whatsoever. And same there here is as well. No religion behind my title, okay? I, I'm not a member of the nation. Um, I believe I, in God, though. I believe in the Most High God. I believe in the Creator, and I'm just trying to find out what my connection to that is. So mm -hmm. that's my disclaimer. So please understand that I'm not knocking nobody religion because I plan on studying through all of them. Exactly, because God is in everything. The creator is in everything. He had to hide himself for those who really want that relationship with the creator, work for it. And then you put in the work, the relationship that you're going to build is going to be life changing. Back to the story. So I'm asking myself now, like, dang, why they was keeping me away from this? Why they didn't want me to learn this? Because as a grown man and I'm listening to what the teachings are, as being a black man in America, it's like, damn, this is what I should have heard when I was 13, 14. Oh, duh. This is when they keep it away. Because it's what I'm supposed to hear. Somebody don't want me to hear it. So then I start asking the question, who was I before slavery then? Because this is the rabbit hole I'm going down. Just trying to find out question in my manhood. Like, I didn't just end up there. I got, for thank God that I got fired. Because it, it forced me to want to go learn. So now I'm listening to the nation's teaching. It's making me think because I'm I'm not just saying, oh, no. I'm like, damn, this, these are some thought-provoking topics that they're speaking about. Let me do a little bit more research about, okay, what happened? Slavery practices. Like, okay, like, damn, they, you really did take away everything that we know about ourselves. So I couldn't tell you who I was before slavery. I couldn't tell you what I did before slavery. But I know that ever since that time, Everything in my brain is what was given to me by my slave in slavery. Mm -hmm. This was the like, so just think about I want you guys to really think about what I'm saying right now. You came into an unknown, like if 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 it went down the, the way they say it went down with what we've been taught, let's just keep it as that. The which are mm -hmm. the facts. Are we denying are, are we denying the slavery happened? No, we're not. Right? Nobody's denying that slavery happened, right? Nobody's denying that slavery happened. Okay, right? So in order to enslave a person, you have to control a person. Right? So if you have people enslaved for the time frame of slavery could be, you know, it's not really known exactly, but let's say roughly a little over 400 years. Correct? Yeah, they, they got it in 1776 to 1865. What? And that's what they got in slavery. What? Yeah. <laughs> so a hundred years, huh? <laughs> hey man. You see how they, but 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 do you see just right there how they trying to 
Like when, when you're the victor, you can rewrite the history to make you look as good or as bad as you want to. So you, you know you can't deny it, but they trying to dwindle down the time frame that it actually lasted. And then the funny thing about it is I kept reading then it said 400 years. I said, wait a minute. Something ain't adding up. Yeah, I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, now. I said, let me do some bad from 17. They don't sound like no fun, but we all know what, what it is. But okay. I said, that, yeah, just like you said, how they control things. That's why I said. All that. right, so we we going to get into it because I got a couple more topics. We ain't going to keep you all too long today. This is just the who am I segment, man. And, and it's somebody else out there that want to know who they are. So anyway. <sighs> They say slavery lasted for four hundred, or uh, I ain't gonna give them that credit because I ain't gonna I ain't gonna disrespect my ancestors like that. So mm -hmm. it could have been longer than four hundred, but it definitely wasn't shorter. Damn it! So you're not gonna play me out of that. <laughs> for real. But anyway, but anyway, just imagine the mindset of the generations. If they've been in captive for over 400 years, it's like, okay, you're going to knock these first ones off. So they they probably got a whole bunch of history in their brains, and, and then they, that, you're going to knock them off, they gone. Okay? you Then the next round, you're going to knock them off. They, they didn't know none of the history because you didn't allow none of them to be taught because you knocked out the people who knew the history. Before, mm -hmm. the, before the next generation was able to even comprehend and learn you killed everybody who knew everything. Mm -hmm. But you made sure you had what you needed to repopulate. So just imagine a next generation growing up that already don't know nothing. So you get to instill whatever you want to in them and raise them however you want to beat them however you want to. And then they have more. And you chop them off so they can't even teach how bad it was before. You listen to where I'm going with this. So you keep chopping off anybody before they can teach what's actually been happening. So then you get to a generation that only know this as a way of life. They don't know that before this, it was anything other than this. This is all they know. So you control the whole narrative. You control everything that comes into their world. You control every piece of knowledge that they get. You control how everything, every which way they're taught. You control everything about their well-being. That's how I'm thinking. So that made me want to know, who was I before this controlling shit got into in, instilled in me? How did I get down? Like, because for me, I'm looking at my culture and my people, and we don't realize that we all have been raised by our enslavers. Oh yeah, uh -uh. we've Everywhere. all adopted the culture of our enslaver mm -hmm. in every way. So let's get back to why it is that they don't, because they steal all the history, right? They steal all the history, stolen all the history, not just stolen from our mental history. They stole the physical history as well. Yeah. And rewrote that as well. And mm -hmm. that's been proven. That's a fact. There's so there's more African history in I think they was that England and Britain than it is in Africa. No, I ain't know that fact, but that's that's crazy. I believe it though. I believe it because I seen like uh them cathedrals in the back room. Sometimes 60 minutes to do an interview, they take you back. I seen all that stuff. I was like, man, it's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Now it's like, okay, y'all see where I'm at. Y'all see where I'm going. So I can't really find out too much of pre-slavery stuff because that's really hard to find. Like, yes. It's really, really, really hard to find about who you were pre-slavery, who, like, I don't know what culture I'm from, I don't know what tribe I'm from, I don't know what region I'm from, I don't know if I was already in the United States of America, I don't know if I'm from Mexico, I don't know if I'm from the Caribbean, 
Because black people inhabited the whole effing planet. Yes, we did. We are the original man. Once I figured that out and I saw that, like, oh, or woman, we're the originals, period. Once I realized that, it was like, damn, I don't know where to, I really don't know where I'm from now. Mm -hmm. right, so let me just chalk that up for right now, right? So follow me, follow me, you guys. Follow me. I'm on a learning journey. I'm just trying to find out who I am. So hopefully y'all keeping up with the timeline of me getting ostracized from me getting ostracized from chasing the American dream. Trust me, I was, I was, I was all bought in to chasing the American dream. So they fired me from that, though. All praise due to the multi. But anyway, so now I'm on this uh, journey to where I can't find out too much pre-slavery stuff about who I might be. Like, I yeah. know about a lot of, I found out about African history, but that still ain't really telling. I know that's a part of my history, but I wanted yeah. like something that I can closer to, that I can relate to, that I, you know what I'm saying? That I can yeah. like, like ancestry bloodline type stuff. So then I look into what happened to us after slavery. Mm hmm like, okay, we free now, we we on our own. And what really sparked this interest was remembering about how late I learned about what we spoke on last episode, the, the massacre of Black Wall Street. Yes. So that made me want to look into just what Black Wall Street was and, and how they thrived. And was there other Black Wall Street? So when I found out and really learned that this country has a history of destroying black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I I'll take it a step further. Uh, I found out there's a couple of black towns under lakes. Oh yeah, Lake Lanier. Lake mm -hmm. Lanier. One of them is Lake Lanier is drying up right now. Yep. So yeah, so Lake Lanier. Um, that's what they did to a lot of them. Um, it's the lake in uh, I think it's like. Chicago or New York or Central Park or something that was black owned. It, the Central Park is is supposed to have been like on built on top of a, a and like it's so much. It's so like y'all you don't know <laughs> we're not here just yet to give us the whole history lesson. So if you want the whole history lesson, please do some homework and and you Google everything else. You, you figure out everything else. So just go Google the truth that I'm speaking about about how mm -hmm. this country has done so much atrocity and mass murders and massacres of black towns and countries. And so when we talk about reparations and what you owe, slavery is one thing. But to do this to your own quote unquote citizens and people, once they're no longer quote unquote your property, to me, that's yeah. even fucking worse than what you did during because don't get me wrong, I'm I'm not trying to say that slavery wasn't bad. I'm not trying to compare the two, but for these people to be free and thriving, not even bothering you, living their best life without you, for you to show the hatred that you have for that. Because they can get along without you, because they can make things without you, and you honestly see that, like, damn, mm -hmm. they doing good they, over there. They mm -hmm. doing better than us. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what people got to remember also is that we was the slavery, worker. We had the skills. We had the. We was the worker. We had the skills. They had to come to us. They didn't know how to do nothing. The only thing they knew how to do was how to tell somebody to do something. So. There were plenty of them. Like, I'm going to just, uh, July 27, 1816, the Negro Fort Massacre. The U.S. fired, the U.S. Army firebombed, firebombed a fort in the Appalachian River in Florida. All right. Um, just a couple more. This is plenty of them, but I'm just going to, you know. April 12, 1864, Union soldiers massacred at Fort Pillow. Confederate troops massacred over 500 surrendering Union soldiers, majority African-American, all right? 
this is just, you know, November 29th, 1864, Sand Creek Massacre. Sand Creek Massacre. I need to work on my reading, guys, but I, I know what I'm reading, but y'all don't know what I'm reading. So it all, it's all good. I got to work on my pronunciation, like my wife said. A Colorado cavalry unit, cavalry unit on orders from Colorado's governor in ignoring a su surrender flag brutally attacked the Cheyenne and the, the Cheyenne and Aparho tribe. White abolitionist Silas Soul was assassinated for reporting the event. So not only was they killing us because we're mm -hmm. Indians too, um, they was killing the people who stood up for us, the people who reported the truth about what they did. So we, I like to guys. When I hear stories of the past, of things that happened before I, I got here, I like to find similarities of things I've noticed within my lifetime. So that gives me a little bit of context about who and what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that makes sense to y'all. So this happened in... 1929, I mean, on November 29th, 1864, where they killed the white abolitionists for reporting the event. How many people have we seen killed or ostracized for trying to speak the truth? All right, let's keep going. <laughs> so there is um, May 3rd, the Memphis Massacre. July 30th, eight, May 3rd, 1866, Memphis Massacre. Uh, December 9th, 1864, Ebenezer Creek Massacre. July 30th, 1866, New Orleans Massacre. September 9th, 1868, Camilla Massacre. I mean, there's, there's man. Um, September 28th, 1868, Opelosha's Massacre. Like, that, that's, come on, y'all. Go Google. Go Google. So, I, I, I don't want to speak on that. I don't want to be carried away because I can talk about that all day. But I'm just saying that to prove this point. This country has been doing a lot. And then it made me think like, does this country really not like black people? Like, obviously so they enslaved us, but damn, like, like it's 2020, whatever. Like. I don't want to just be sounding like I'm blaming. Like, I don't want to sound like that black dude. Like, because I've had, I've had chances to do good jobs. I've had chances to this, that, and this. Like, I do see some of my people making it. So I don't want to seem like this country is against us. Like, I don't want to be that dude. But then I looked into, like, is the government against black people? I'm just asking questions, right? So, is the government against black people, bro? What do you know, man? Like, I'm gonna ask you now before I before I continue, man. What do you know? Is is our government against black people, or is, has our government ever been against black people? Has our government ever had um systems in place or or policies that 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 were specifically to keep black people down? Like you said before, you have to look at the past to understand what's going on now. So if we look at the past, we have uh, in the 1900s, we have something called COINTELPRO. Okay. I think I heard about that. Matter of fact, I know I heard about that. Let's yeah, go. you have that with, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Okay. You have that going on. Wasn't he the um director of the FBI or something like that? Yes, he was. Okay. And whoa, then whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, bro. Hold on, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. So, I mean, but we knew that through the Black Panther Party too, though. So I can't act like I'm super surprised at the end of the day. But keep going. Hold on, keep going. So, I was, I was going to throw out this timeline to people. 1900 to 1939, right there, is when segregation was at its highest. 
if people don't understand that, in the year 1896, you have Plessy versus Ferguson. That what started it all off. It was said it was supposed to be separate but equal. We all know how that went. Then here come the laws separating everything. That's when you see Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and um, his movement. That's why he was marching. That's where you get Rosa Parks from this time period. Oh my God. So I'm just putting it's, the timeline together. Go ahead. Is uh is what we mostly taught in school about the figures for black people. We don't hear a lot of uh Marcus Garvey in school books for nobody like him. If you don't know who he is, y'all can go look that up. But uh, go ahead, Dirk. Bro. Bro. Mm-hmm. Well, you said Martin Luther King, but I'm thinking about, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm just keeping it hold on, people. bro. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Black Wall Street happened way before Martin Luther King happened. Right, so I'm just thinking about this timeline. We wouldn't even have needed no Martin Luther King had they not been doing, bro. If you just leave us alone, <laughs> yeah, you need us way more than we need you. We know that. Well, at least we used to know that. <laughs> but then what happened was you kept destroying everything that we built. Mm -hmm. Force us to be dependent. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And since you touched on that, like you said, we wouldn't even need it, the whole civil rights movement, if you would have left us alone. We wouldn't have asked for rights of any kind because we weren't worried about you. We had our own. We had our, we was building our own and inviting more of our own to come rock with us. So, yeah. The ones who wasn't with us was leaving you to come with us. Exactly. Understand what I just said. When 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 y'all threw us away, well, y'all didn't want to throw us away. Let me let me rephrase that. When 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 because there were so many people who was pissed that slavery ended, because now they didn't have free labor no more. But it was also so many white people who were living in the same conditions that we were. Like, so I don't oh, want y'all to ever think that. It's been black versus white for us. Mm -hmm. It's been it's, it's it's more been, of a when I look at it, it's more of a class thing. Yeah, exactly. people seem that poor whites was looked at just like us. Even till this day, they looked at just like us to the That's upper class. Get along, mm -hmm. but it's it's, yeah. it's still some poor whites who are delusional that think oh, we're yeah. the problem. Of course. Not realizing that it's your own people just doing this to all of us. Yeah. So, man, so it, that just really made me think, bro, like of the of the extended timeline of our greatness. Like even after slavery, we built towns, we built cities, we built structures that were destroyed and buried and and flooded. So the history of them will be gone because. There's obviously somebody who don't want me to know what I'm capable of. There's obviously somebody who don't want me to know who I really am. Because it wasn't taught to me and this information wasn't readily available to me, I had to go digging for it. But I also appreciate having to dig for it because now I appreciate what I'm learning. It's, like, it's, so now it's going to have even more greater significance that we all go on this journey so we can know what we're fighting for. We can know what we're standing for. We can know what we will tolerate. We can know, we will know what we will not tolerate. Mm -hmm. And we can also see who's doing what. But we were speaking about the FBI. This one made me go, whoa, 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 whoa. Because these black towns and cities prior to the civil rights movement and all of this were destroyed by this country. And when mm -hmm. I say this country, I mean the powers that be. Um, the powers that be have never been 
African American or black people ever in this country. Now, before Columbus came, we wasn't tripping off. Like, I don't know that history. Before Columbus, I'm sure there were black people here that was just living just fine. Mm -hmm. They already had a sense of the way. Like, the buffalo was roaming. The buffalo, y'all ever seen the buffalo nickel? When the last time y'all seen a buffalo? <laughs> Who came and killed all the damn buffaloes? The Indians worked. The Indians loved the buffaloes. That was their, the bison. Yeah. Yep. So for me, I just, from what I, the truths I'm learning about, like, certain things, it's helping me understand that we need to wake up and do some history and do some learning and do some understanding about what's really taking place. What 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 our ignorance is really condoning. Let me put it that way. Let me put it that way. As long as we choose to stay ignorant or choose to have a blind eye, we're condoning it. So, yeah, everybody want to see the Epstein list. Everybody want to know who on the list. Don't you know you got a fucking Jeffrey Epstein in your next door? Look, say it. Say it. Like, don't you? <laughs> See? So, See? we be fake mad and I'm tired of us being fake mad but the reason we be fake mad is because we don't have the education to really understand what we're supposed to be mad about exactly, exactly. like and just remember people we still on segregation we ain't even left the segregation era yet um, I'm, I'm, I'm just I ain't even went into nothing yet because I'm just breaking down the timeline of me wanting understanding and me wanting growth and me wanting knowledge. But as me doing that, I get caught up in just, you know, the truths. I ain't said no, I ain't said not one lie. If, if I've lied about anything, please correct me in the comments. If I've lied about anything, if I have okay. lied about, if I've misquoted anything or if I miss said anything, I know I may have some of my dates and timelines wrong, but I'm speaking about the facts. All right, I'm speaking about what actually happened. So if, if I made up something that didn't go down, please correct me because I'm not here to make nobody look bad. Mm. The facts and the truth is going to make you look bad. Truths will always be truths. Try not to make ugly. So it's, it's not me that's talking down or talking bad. It's your actions. It's the truth. So, with that being said, I was asking myself, is there an agenda from this country against Black people? So, my brother had brought up the COINTELPRO. My brother was talking about J. Edgar Hoover. So, to give you guys an example, and you if you don't know who J. Edgar Hoover was, if you don't know what COINTELPRO was, J. Edgar Hoover was the director of the FBI, right? And a March 1968 memo. So this is around Martin Luther, I don't know, this is around the Martin Luther King, uh, the Civil Rights Movement time. This is around Civil Rights Movement time, right? So this is after all of these other things that have already been done, right? This is after that. This is when we might be trying to build up again. OK, mm -hmm. so let's keep that in mind that we've already left slavery, built our own towns all across this country, built our own all across this country that were all in the, in, individually destroyed. Everything we built by ourselves without the help of our enslavers was destroyed. OK, so now we're here. Right. So we're just trying to find our way. We're just trying to be like. Dang, like y'all, we can't like we ain't even. Whew, whew, whew. <laughs> what is it gonna take? Like, what is it? Okay, we can't have nothing on our own. You already said we can't have nothing on our own. So then you don't want us to be with you. We can't be on our own. So think about that, you guys. I want to think about this shit. We had our own. They destroyed it. But then they didn't want us to be able to share nothing. So we we going through seg we had our own. Okay, we were segregated. Black birth, black black this, white that. Mm -hmm. We built our own black everything. 
y'all destroyed it. Right? But then you don't want us to use your stuff either. So, yeah. so then, okay, all right, cool. So now we trying to build up again, but mm -hmm. we can't build from nothing. Mm -hmm. We can't, you can't, you can't make a tree without, I mean, you can't make a table without the tree. You know what I'm saying? So we have nothing. We're reduced to nothing again. And we're starting to build ourselves again, find our own way, come work for you, pull our resources, this, that, and this. We're doing whatever we got to do to survive, right? Now, just to remind the people, during this time period after the bombing happened, the banks took the money. Because all the information you needed to get your money was in the houses that they bought. All right. So now you banks with all this money. Till this day, bro, they still ain't gave the money up. No, nah, they still ain't. The, 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 there's still a few survivors. I don't know if they went on home yet, but there were still a few survivors from the Tulsa, Oklahoma incident. Um, and I and it's just crazy, but so I don't really. I mean, we we gonna we gonna break. We're gonna break the atrocities down, bro. Like, but I just wanna get get the understanding of who's doing what, who's been doing what, who's still doing what, so it can help understand why I don't know who I am. Because at the end of the day, that's all I'm trying to figure out is mm -hmm. who I am. What am I supposed to be willing to die for? Don't get me wrong, you guys. Everybody don't have the same mission. I know my mission mm -hmm. is to figure out something worth living for. No, no way. I, I said that wrong. My mission is to figure out something worth dying for. Mm, there you go. There you go. That's my mission. Yeah. To figure out something worth dying for. My mm -hmm. wife, my children, my family, they're worth living for. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to stay healthy. I want to stay prosperous. I want to do great things because they're worth that. But I'm going to die one day. Mm -hmm. I need to find something worth dying for, too. Hey. And if I don't know who I am... If I don't know what I'm supposed to represent, if I don't know what I'm supposed to stand for, then I don't know what what's worth dying for. Because I would risk my life for my 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 family for sure, like to preserve theirs. Like, don't get me wrong, but I'm supposed to be trying to live for them. Yeah. But at yeah. the end of the day, I also know that it's something I'm supposed to be going so hard for with my warrior spirit, with my spirit, like that I'm willing to. Show to God, and that's what I figured out too. That, oh my, see, <laughs> damn, I'm, I'm spilling the beans, I'm spilling the beans, I'm spilling the beans, I'm spilling the beans, I'm spilling the beans. <laughs> so yeah, I figured that my God is worth dying for. Mm -hmm. But you got to find out who your God is for him to be worth dying mm -hmm. for. Or, and it can't be another God somebody else gave you. Hey, I'm just say that. Uh, for me, like, I'm not gonna die for nothing. I don't have a connection to. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna die for nothing. I don't have a connection to. It's like dying for nothing. Yeah, and that ain't you know. But so, man, let's get back. Let's get. Oh shit, boy, we be getting in. So um, back to the agenda that is against black people, right? So you took everything that we built on our own, don't want to share or, or don't want it to be this, that, and this. So we fighting for civil rights. Like, come on, bud. You can't just keep killing us in the streets. You can't just keep bombing our churches. Because every time we do, you can't just keep doing this to us. Like, you can't. just like We just want to be civil. Not equal. Civil. Yep. Do y'all understand that? <laughs> Do y'all understand that? Civil. Civil. 
We just want to live, but can we be civil? Bro, look up the definition of civil for me real quick, please. <laughs> what is the definition of civil, man? Because that's all we was fighting for. That's all we wanted, but like civil rights. Civil. It's an adjective pertaining to citizens or civil society. In a general sense, civil is often used as an adjective to describe things related to citizens or civil society. For example, civil rights refer to the rights of citizens and civil discourse refers to respectful and orderly conversation among members of society. It also can mean polite and courteous. Civil, civil can also describe behavior that is polite, courteous, and considerate. For instance, engaging in civil conversation means maintaining respectful and courteous manner. Uh, the legal term of civil is used in legal context to refer to matters that involve private rights and remedies as opposed to civil, I mean, uh, criminal matters. Civil law deals with disputes between individuals or organizations often seeking compensation or resolution rather than punishment. So we know, like, from the base upon that definition, that for somebody to have to ask for that, the, the country, the way of life mm -hmm. was normal for you not to treat a certain individual civil. Like it was, it was actually like the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like, like people look at you stupid if you didn't treat these people that way. Yep. I want you guys to think about that. If you were nice to black people, you got ostracized by white people. Hear yep. me out. Hear me out. If you were nice to black people, you got ostracized by white people. Think about the mindset that that creates amongst other white people. Think about the mindset that creates within black people. And once you indoctor that, or not indoctor that, once you add that with the fact that we did have a FBI leader by the name of J. Edgar Hoover, that the country's found in the FBI, and we're fighting for civil rights. And a March 1968 memo stated the program's goal, COINTELPRO. Go look it up. It was funded by our country. It was ran by the FBI. And a program was called COINTELPRO. A March 1968 memo stated the program's goal was to prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups to prevent the rise of a messiah who could unify the militant black nationalist movement. Okay. I'm going to just stop it right there. Where at in our history, the history that we've been talking about, all of these massacres, all of this, all of this bad things that happened, did we leave out any point Correct me if I'm wrong, where black people went burning down white people homes in town. Did we leave out any part? Don't, don't get me wrong. If if I missed it, help me see in history, help me see in history to where black people went and just other than the slavery, mm -hmm. other than the slavery ball. Don't get me wrong. I know about some of I know about some of my Nat Turners and, and some of them too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not speaking on that. I'm speaking on as a free black man. In this country, post-slavery, when you stop doing it, when you supposedly have just let us free, where in history has a group of black people or or just black people went and burned down white towns, bombed white towns, flooded white towns, did anything like this? Okay, so if that's not the case, why do you feel that we are worried about that? Or why do you have to have a whole program just to stop that? I mean, because to me, it's like, I really believe that they, this country does things out of their own guilt. Yeah, it does. Like, like, 
And what I mean by that is, you know you've done black people so fucking wrong that you have to do whatever you can to keep them down because if you know if they ever figure it out or if they ever rise up, they may want to either get some get back or hold you accountable. And either way, you know you done fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's just what I'm starting to see, bro, because it's like we've always just been trying to do us. Leave us alone. Not to mention, even after the civil rights movement, you know what we had then, right? Nah, man, I'll talk to me. Crack error. Oh, oh, bro, 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 that's bro. Oh, I didn't even want to get into that. 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 Because that's it. It's because it, we if we, we speak in fact and truth, which we are, it fits within the timeline. No, it, it definitely it all fits. The, the crack era hit in the late eighties, right, or the mid eighties, the, the the late seventies, the late seventies, early eighties. That's when the crack mm-hmm. era hit. But I want yep. you guys to really understand and think about this right even before the crack era it was like the welfare movement to where mm-hmm. black men had to be removed from the homes if they wanted any type of government assistance it's always been some type of agenda right but just yep. speaking on that crack era crack was so detrimental the drug epidemic was so detrimental because even what they under what they finally got and realized that's why it's important for us to really speak on mental health and speak on overcoming addictions and things like that what they finally realized well they may they may have been doing i don't know what they how they think or how they operate but i'm learning but what they got and 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 put into practice was damn we can burn it down we can destroy it they're going to build another one they're mm-hmm. going to figure out how to build another one and keep coming back. The only way to de- stop that from happening is to destroy them and their generation. So that crack implant served multiple purposes. For one, it destroyed our mindsets and what mm-hmm. and our goals. And you will. And it le- it had a little, it dangled the carrot in front of the D-boys and it had the people who was hooked, hooked. But then they can turn around and use that to destroy the community from within. Now we got wars and drug wars and territory wars because some games had structure, some games didn't. But regardless, huh? I mean, because I remember with that as well, the same time, this when they're taking these programs we mentioned the first episode. Out the schools at the same time. Yeah. So now you you can't even you don't know how to do nothing. They're not giving you no job work that's paying. So you either got one or two choices. I'm either gonna sell this and provide for my family, or I'm gonna take it because I can't provide for my family. And that's what most people did. And also got locked up for it. So oh, we, yeah. we filled their jails, destroyed yeah. our community. And got hooked on it. And then it was like this thing called alcohol, too, to just all of a sudden, now you see liquor stores on every other corner and this, that, and this. And So fast yeah. forward into today. If you don't know where we've been, you can't see where we're here. You don't know where we're going. And the reason I say that is because once we clean ourselves up and starting demanding that our brother clean himself up, and start demanding that our sister clean herself up, clean the way they think up, clean what they know about each other up, and we can start supporting each other like we're supposed to, we're going to stop tolerating this shit. Oh, yeah. We're going to start seeing... So it says, right, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That only applies if you know what the weapon is. If you don't know what the weapon is and how it's being used, it's going to keep whooping your motherfucking ass. You don't know what to do. But as soon as you point the weapon out and be like, oh, okay. And now you point the weapon out, then you learn the tool that you need to defeat that weapon. Then it's like, okay, I see you, but I got this. So it's 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 time, man. It's time, man. So 
2024 is going to be the year of truth. Oh, yeah. We done seen some examples of that. Yeah, I mean, um, 2024 been off to a great start, man. The cat is out the bag, baby. <laughs> the cat is out the bag. Yeah. Hey, hey yeah. I can't. I can't, I can't. We done seen homeboy run and jump and attack the judge. Oh, yeah. Early. We done, Early. Seen, we done seen homeboy run and attack. What, what, let's get a timeline of what done happened in 2024 already. Let's talk about that a little bit before we get up out of here. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's, talk about, let's talk about the truths that we're already seeing come to light. Because uh, I, I done seen homeboy run and attack the judge. That had me dying laughing. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll be honest, I'm surprised nobody ever did that before. Um, we just ain't never seen it before. That too. That too. Ain't nothing that new too. under the sun. Yeah, facts. I want to know exactly how many times that has happened. Somebody gets into somebody jump over that motherfucker. Like, I I ain't nothing new under the revolution will be televised. But but my man Cat though exposed like for me, he didn't tell me nothing about Holly Weird that I didn't already know, but it's just that now he's exposing individuals, like you people, name. yeah, you people name. named to situations and scenarios, and and it's crazy because a lot of us knew that it was a, a different fraternity over there, and but it's different like when you get to see firsthand about those who choose not to join that fraternity get treated mm -hmm. and like yeah. people coming out this saying things against cat but like, nobody really denying it nah. nah and I feel like the reason for that is it's just my opinion just because half our celebrities are leading blacks. They're not black leaders. What yeah. do I mean? Leading blacks are the ones they put in front of you. You know what I'm saying? That you see over and over and over. And some of them may be funny, but let's be real, man. Let's let's all be all be serious. The people they name, they ain't to me, they ain't funnier than cat. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying that because I'm a fan. I, I also heard Kevin Hart stuff, you know. I was rocking with him for a minute when he first came out, but then it seemed like his material just stayed the same. I don't know. That's just me, I, you know. I, but I'm not really because Cat is a great comedian. I'm I'm just speaking on really right now, truth, and from the things that Cat was saying about these individuals, receipts can be found. <laughs> And you didn't they find it. Right. And was done in the dark shall come to light. So Kat spoke on said taking one of his jokes, but now I done seen clips of said taking other people's jokes. Uh -huh. So for me, it's like and him speaking on that, uh Hank, I, I grew up like Mark Curry from Oakland. I'm from Oakland, California. Mark Curry from so I, Hanging with Mr. Cooper is always one of my favorite shows. So I've been saw that um, the Steve Harvey show was a, a, a bite from Hanging with Mr. Cooper. I've been seeing that, but I like Hanging with Mr. Cooper better because um, Mark Curry was a dad and, and, a, and he, no, not really a dad, but he invited his cousin over to come live with him. Mm -hmm. And it was like more of a family vibe to the show. Mm -hmm. It was more of a family vibe to the show as opposed to like so, but they did bite though, man. They did bite. And and I'm just ready to to continue to ask the right questions. Oh, yeah. Ask the oh, right yeah. questions. Because the truth don't mind being questioned. It sure it really don't. But the lie can't stand it. The lie like, can't stand you questioning and and the, yeah, just, the lie get mad, boy. They responded, but they ain't said he lied. No, no, I'm just speaking about in general in life, man, because if the, the liar gonna get mad and get frustrated and get angry that you questioning him, what what the old folks say a uh, a hit dog gonna holler? A hit dog gonna holler. So, man, this was episode two. We just are unpacking the journey of finding out who we are, 
I know that's what I want to do. Um, so we just getting started. We gonna we gonna carry on next week about things we spoke on this week. Just getting a little. We we slowly but surely gonna get deeper and deeper and deeper to what some like may like to call the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we're chasing our tails, human beings. We are chasing our tails. We were born with a purpose that we are not fulfilling because we're so busy, we're so distracted. We're 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 having to do things that doesn't benefit humanity. And what I mean by that is I believe at one point in time we were trying to progress the world forward. Which we are still doing. Don't get me wrong. The technology, the re like we we are definitely a lot further along than we used to be. But what's our goal? Mm -hmm. Like, how do we look as uh, a society? Because we don't have any. Well, I'm I'm just speaking within a black culture. Um, I, I want to make that disclaimer too that. I'm inviting everybody to come get the education. I'm inviting everybody to come join in and, and enjoy the show and enjoy the journey and enjoy the... But when I say, who am I? I'm speaking as a black person. Straight up. In this country of the United States of America. I don't... I don't... I don't know. Like, I... I, I ain't never... I ain't never been to another country and hang out with my family. Yeah, same. Same. I ain't never Same. been. Let me say that again. I have never been to another country to hang out with my ancestors and my family. Same. So, with that being said, if I can't be told where that is, this is mine. This is all I know. Mm -hmm. So, but where's my piece of it, though? Yeah, like, I'm with you. My, this is my, my, my birth, like, like at the end of the day, the way I'm looking at shit, the way I'm starting to really interpret it, we lightweight still enslaved. Ain't, <laughs> there's a whole other topic. <laughs> there's a whole other topic. I mean, but, uh, that, that, when you really want to unpack it. Yeah, if you look at this, yeah. go. I can go yeah. wherever I want to, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But but it's gonna be the same shit. It's gonna be the same thing. Where my tribe at? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be the same. We we this 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 journey is to invite others to take it with us for one mm -hmm. to get the education that like I, I want to get that I'm striving to get. I'm asking a question, so I'm just leading up until we really start to unpack these things because what what happened with me is I tried to give myself steak when I was still an infant. Meaning, mm -hmm. can't feed an infant steak. Mm -hmm. deep. Deep right you cannot feed an infant steak. You got to give it baby food. Right? You got to wait till it get teeth. You got to wait till it know how to chew. You got to wait till it... So for me, when I dove, when I wanted this, I was like, ooh, ooh. Yeah, but I was getting fed things that I couldn't digest, that I couldn't eat up, that I couldn't chew. So I don't want to in turn do that to the people that I'm trying to bring along this journey with me. So I'm giving it, hopefully I'm giving it to you in forms that you can sit on, taste a little bit, and digest properly. Yeah, and, and another thing I like to add, uh, I like how we're doing it too in the aspect of we're not telling people that how we see things and what we come up with is the only answer. No. If, if, like you said, if you find something, man, put it in the comments, man. Uh, reach out. You can get up here too. Let's learn and grow. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I just want to know the truth, man. And thy shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So just because I said I'm not claiming no religions don't mean I ain't reading. Mm -hmm. Don't mean I ain't growing because if, if, if God say this is me, then I'd be a fool not to listen, but I'd also be a fool not to question. Mm -hmm. Because even Jesus Christ in the, from the Bible never once said, 
I want you to be a Christian. So I'm just questioning so I can learn, so I can confidently worship. And I don't think anybody who worships something or proclaims something or says they love any entity can do that properly if you don't question a few things and do the work. Because as a as a as a as a young man, oh, this is deep right here. This is a good one. As a young man, of course I said I love you back to my mom when she said I love you. But as I got older and got a better understanding and got a better knowledge of what my mom went through to raise me, once my maturity increased, that love increased, that connection even increased. So if you haven't really, well, speaking to myself, this is what I was asking myself. If you haven't really did the homework to know what your people been through, to know what the God has put you through, to know what the creator has always been doing, to know what the creator has always done, to know what the creator is st striving to do, then you won't be able to really say that you love the creator. True. Like, True. how much connection do you have with my work? True. How much research have you done for yourself? So if you just always going to believe what somebody told you, yeah, that's great. But then you really don't have no connection with it because you don't have no connection with it. You believe in it just because your grandma told you to believe it, because your mama told you to believe it, because they mama told them to believe it, that they mama told them to believe it, that was instilled to them from who? <laughs> Since day one. So who are you in this country what do you know about yourself? Is is what you know about yourself taught to you from your enslaver? Or have you taken the time to go research what your enslaver don't want you to know? Right, man. Because honestly... It's somebody that don't want me to know who I am. That's why my mm -hmm. history was stolen out of Africa. That's why my history was drowned and stolen from this country. That's why I don't see too many um, documentaries on the atrocities that happened in American history. Like you, you don't, you don't see that. But just tell me who the black man is, who the black man was. But it's okay. You don't got to tell me. I'm gonna figure it cool. out for myself. I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna find go, out. go ahead and see that. Yeah, I mean, we we got it. So that, that's what I like to say. It's like you've had your turn. You had every opportunity to teach the truth, educate the truth, and be accountable for the truth. So now that you didn't take advantage of those opportunities. We don't, we, you don't, we don't need you anymore. Like we never needed you. Like we never. So I, it's time for my people to learn about us the right way. Because obviously we got to teach ourselves. So that's it for me today. I can't wait to unpack a lot of this stuff on this journey. Um, hopefully this helps somebody. Hopefully this encourages somebody to actually go do some research for yourself, to just learn a little bit more about yourself, to be confident and comfortable in knowing that you ain't the only one who didn't know who lost and who just trying to find a way in this country that we call America, or the United States of America. Um, is is different for us as black people. Totally different. And only black people are gonna be able to relate to that. So I love y'all all day, every day, and every time. Oh. Peace.
Blessings and love, kings and queens. Blessings and love. Praying that this message is reaching you in the best of health while I'm sending you my blessings and love. Because somebody woke up dead today, and it most definitely was not you. It was not you. Every time I close my eyes, I see your face. It's still hard to realize you had to leave this place. For us to one day reunite, be my safe and grace. I ain't gonna lie, sometimes it's hard to keep. I'm on a mission to do whatever it takes to live the life of my dreams. And I want to help other people live the life of their dreams as well. So click the subscribe button and grow with me as I document my dream saving journey.